Welcome to this uh, Closet Creative session, which is about sparking creativity. The purpose of the session is just to offer some ideas and some tools that can help people feel more confident um, in using their creativity so they can better market uh, the work they do in their coaching. Um, hopefully it's going to be fun and uh, practical. Um, I have just asked uh, the people who, who are here in the live space to make sure they have with them three pieces of paper, a pen or pencil, <laughs> thank you for modeling, and a, a, a coin or a button or a small object. Uh, what have you got? You've got a coin, John Paul. I've got then. a coin. Yeah. I'm it's... looking for some rocks, but I can't see any. <laughs> no, okay. Francis is bringing the rock. Rock. Um, great. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll use those later. So as a check in um to ask you i was going to say write it down but i think we can we can we can share it as a coach what is it that you create in the world maybe you're adding to something or maybe it's a whole new thing what what exists in the world um, because of your coaching how many words um seven <laughs> do you, can it be less than that do we get any points for like do you get the most points for the, le the least words brevity is always a skill isn't it yeah okay so uh seven or three or one just go but i encourage you to go with with uh, whatever instinctively feels like the most uh inspiring answer in the moment Okay. Okay. Got something. Would you would you like could you share it with us, Francis? What is it that you create more in the world through your coaching? Inspiration and confidence. Inspiration and confidence. That's yeah, that's the output. Yeah. How about you, John Paul? Uh I'd say fresh connections. Right. Uh like different perspectives, kind of enabling people to focus on their strengths but just kind of looking at things and moving to different places and and mentally and then physically okay yeah so there's an internal and external kind of yeah connection going on um i'm going to go with uh joy and possibility um but i'm vibing with that france francis your your inspiration um uh, i'll invite you to write that down actually on on top of the uh, of your first sheet of paper just so you know you remember it later on because we might need it um so in my work i support people to make their ideas real and to take the next step in their creative practice um and that's been heavily informed by my own reflections having spent many years making things and being interested in that I'm trying to understand well what is it that any of us need to be creative in any sphere across our lives? Um, and what I've arrived at is, is a model that underpins the work that I do with the people I work with. And some of these, I'm going to share them, some of them might be more obvious than some um, than others. And th th some of them are the kinds of things that maybe we don't realise the, they're important until they're missing. Um, Actually, yeah, yeah, we'll do this first and then we'll do that. Okay, I'm talking to my co-facilitator here. So <laughs> one of the, the first one, not the first one, but the first one I'm talking about is purpose. The, the idea that my creativity feels connected to a reason. Uh, the second one is expression, that my ideas become real and are shareable. So they exist in the world beyond me. One is practice. I have ways of creating that work for me. Another one is connection. My relationships with others support me. A really important one is growth. So my, my world is a flourishing one that I want to explore. And finally, wholeness. My creativity is in harmony with my life. Um, 
those are the, the sort of six dimensions that I think about when I'm, I'm working with people. And the idea is if, if all of those are full and and those idea um, statements are true, then that's a really good base for us to be creative, creating and sharing in an authentic and sustainable way. Um, OK, on your second piece of paper, because we're going to we're going to riff on this a little bit. Um, can you draw a hexagon driv uh, divided into six equal triangles as much as you can manage? <laughs> like that. Testing people's geometry skills. Francis, you look like you're drawing a very big hexagon. I am. Okay. <laughs> oh, you can't see it. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. That's good. Oh, wow. John Paul's is so good. Yeah. Are you, yeah. That's only because of the blur. <laughs> it's, it's that's well good. Blurred. That's great. Okay. Yeah. That's awesome. All right. So um, on one edge of those, could you write the word purpose, please? I don't like mine. You don't like yours. You can quickly redo it, but you know. In the spirit of creativity, can also embrace imperfection. I have to do it better. Yeah. You start with the lines and then you join them. Yeah, that's uh, what I did. Oh, okay. You did the outside first, right? That's so much better. Okay. You got one? Wait. Okay, that's much better. Thank you. Okay, <laughs> brilliant. So on, on one edge, please write the word purpose. So just uh, as you're feeling right now here today, consider it, how to, the, the degree to which this feels true for you. My creativity feels connected to a reason. What do you do uh, with it? Sorry, how, how to, and how... yeah, so, and the second part is, uh, and based on that, where's my pen? My pen. Um, fill in the triangle relating to purpose. Um, as far as if it's, uh, as far as um, how much you feel that to be true. So if it's not so true, maybe it's just a little triangle in in the in the inside there. But if it's true. Um, all the time, then perhaps the whole thing is filled with. Do you mean like um, my creativity is connected to a reason? Hmm. Okay. Just whatever that feels, whatever that means to you right now. Okay. Both got something? Mm -hmm. Cool. Uh, okay, next triangle to, to colour or not colour. Um, uh, on the next side, write expression. So how, how true or not is this for you? My ideas become real and shareable. That means the things that you think of that you're captivated by mentally actually manifest into things that go out into the world. To what degree is that? Does that feel true for you here and now? Cool. Okay, we're gonna move on to the next one, ready? Mm -hmm. Next one is practice. So the next dimension is practice. Um, how true is this for you? My ways of creating work for me. That means when you go to do the thing that you want to realise, the way you go about it generally works for you, or doesn't it? How true is that? Okay. 
And the next one is connection. So this is about relating to other people. So in this dimension, how true is it when I say my relationships with others support me? So in the stuff that I create in the world, I have the right support, supportive relationships with others to help me with that. And next one is growth. So how true is this one for you? My world is a flourishing one that I want to explore. And finally, wholeness. Um, how true is this? My creativity is in harmony with my life. It's the idea that there's a place for it in your life, um, that it uh, exists alongside, not sort of siloed or squashed. How true is that? How in harmony is it with your life? Cool. Um, I'd be really, really interested to see what you each came up with. Um, what does your hexagon look like now? You want us to talk you through it? Yeah, yeah. If you we mind, would you be okay to to share what you've what you've drawn? Yeah, yeah. And maybe talk about um, anything that sort of came up or what you based your um, yeah. responses on. So I don't know if you can see it. Oh, okay. It's cool. probably flipped around. I don't know if it, I'm just seeing the mirror or you are. But so yeah. uh, purpose, yeah. I had that quite high. I'd probably say nine out of 10. And I, I think of it as intense. There's intention behind my creativity. I want to achieve stuff with being creative and probably, probably too much. I don't often play for the sake of play and being creative with always with that intention um in terms of expression uh i feel like that i'm, get, I'm getting there it's kind of it's it's getting out there but i need to do more but it's kind of like it's on the way but it's a bit less, it's certainly less than purpose mm. so maybe I think it's easier if I just call it out of 10. So because okay, well, so, I can communicate it easier than just you kind of trying to yes. make that, okay, which okay. is probably difficult. Uh, so I'd say expression maybe six and a half, seven out of 10. I love it how I create out of 10 and then immediately break that rule. So <laughs> I like going, oh. uh, practice. So I'll uh, put it into practice. Yes, that, that goes kind of with intent. It's all out there. To, to 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 be enabled it's 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 design it's i think of it as embodied thinking so it's there to be connected with and people to see things and and to to bring things on it, if it if there if it isn't doing that for me there's there's no purpose to it it has to be connecting and which i wish is my my theme earlier and then yeah. connection ironically is probably my lowest one uh maybe about three or four out of 10. And that's because of where I am in my journey and that I've been working in actually almost all my career in, in environments where creativity is kind of not seen as a work thing. In fact, it's kind of, it's all about compliance. It's all about fitting in and there is yeah. no place for creativity. And now I'm kind of leaving that environment. I need to create new connections to enable me to support that creativity because I've not had, the opportunity to do that more and i need to figure out what kinds of connections support that creativity and because when i've done creativity it's always something i practiced alone so yeah. um, that's definitely kind of a weak spot and i'd say three out of ten but it's something i'm consciously trying to do now um so growth for me that's 10 out of 10 that's all it's about it's about being at the edge of my comfort zone kind of just i use it to explore ideas and make think about things in a new way and like creativity goes hand in hand with learning with development with with not not being in the same place but actually moving on and if I'm doing that then I can help others to do that uh and finally kind of wholeness um I, I kind of think that 
I, as I said, I'm still find, finding ways to fit in, into my life. It's still like an add-on thing that I do, mm. and it's trying to find the best place to put it. But at the same time, it's kind of central to my learning and growth, so I need to do it more. So I'd say that's probably about five out of ten. That's that's interesting. Um, you're talking, you know, obviously connection is important to you and the purpose mm. of your work, and that's something that in this dimension, that, that kind of creative dimension, you kind of realise that that's something that possibly benefit you know that sort of creative part of you um and also the um yes what you said about growth learning being out for sort of the comfort zone uh yes that's I, I, play for play for me is part of um that and it's interesting is you know play is um can be creativity without an end perp an end goal yeah um, but uh, play is obviously where we try things and you know um without necessarily knowing what the outcome is going to be so I think it just made me made me think of uh think about play how about you Francis uh, where did you get to thank you John Paul yeah not similar to John Paul in terms of the percentages I think um mm. that's mine which I've enjoyed doing. Oh. <laughs> um so you got starting with purpose yeah it was pretty full I similarly to John Paul I always seem to do stuff with intention mm. and whether that's um, creating content or making birthday cards or like, you know, unicorn mugs. There's always a reason why I'm doing it. As John Paul says, there's an intention behind it. But then having said that, listening to what you were saying and then just sort of being witness to my own doodling, there is often, I think, actually no intention behind what it what it is that I'm hoping to produce and I have confidence nevertheless to just keep going with it and you know I went to I did art for GCSE for A level I went to art college I studied art history so I I feel very at home in mm. the creative world and I've worked in the art world and you know I sing and I've um, been in theatre and so you know it's it's very happy for me and homely to be creative and very uncomfortable for me to have no creative output so yes there is purpose often behind what I'm creating but I'm also very comfortable to be creating without there being necessarily any purpose and then the next one's expression and it's yeah virtually 100% um I can't actually remember what you how you described expression so the, the, the your ideas become real and shareable so other people can understand what it is that you're to yeah, yeah. To, the, to the point where I randomly this morning and I did not wake up at all thinking this is what I was going to do um, I just literally in the moment decided I was going to create a space for HR and learning and development people to come and share before they go off for summer how it's all felt for them to be supporting people in the workplace and created a you know created a visual and wrote a thing and made it into a LinkedIn event I've invited 106 HR and learning and development people I have no idea what it is I'm going to be saying or doing but like I make it happen by doing the creative bit first and then it happens and then I'm like oh my god it's happening on Monday at one o'clock like it's a thing I'm doing it and then it's a thing so I use creativity um to actually get shit done 100 percent that spark of inspiration, it becomes the momentum yeah. to get something out there into the world. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. How about those areas where uh, there's sort of things were less present for you? What's um, going on there? So I also put connection as the least, but I'm okay with that because it's one of the very few areas of practice in my life where I actually prefer to be sitting on my own, doodling, noodling, making cards, um, you know, and I think some of my ha happiest and saddest memories have been on my own in a big white studio, just creating stuff or in an art room, a bit stoned, you know, so I don't necessarily associate being on my own with being in a bad place when it comes to creativity. Mm. I don't need more people to make my creativity happen. That's, that's interesting. That's, uh, that's good to know, because I often with the people I work with it's a big area that actually they're what they're looking to focus on what they're looking to realize is immeasurably helped by connecting with more people um and a lot of them feel that need but of course everyone's different and everyone's creative practice so, looks I mean I guess maybe I mean if you talk about creativity in the purest sense 
I don't necessarily need another person sitting there and mm. doing it with me. In fact, I prefer just to be left on my own mm. and I get lost in it. But, you know, in the bigger picture of creating a business, I could not do it on my own. Right. I OK. Without Simon, I could not do it without the support of my husband. I could not do it without the inspiration of my mother and my father's like intellectual and creative input. I couldn't do it without being in the Happy Startup School. I couldn't do it, obviously, without being in this community. So, like, yes, of course, connection is important. Yes. OK. But there, there are places where that's imp- more uh critical than others um yeah and actually i see i see the creative sort of lonely solo practice as being super important because i do so much relating to other people all the time Uh, okay that's interesting but yeah it's kind of makes sense of the the, of um makes sense that because you're doing a lot of that then it, it's all it's, it's that balance thing which is i think is the, is the wholeness bit you know because of your work your work work that creative part of you actually needs maybe a bit more solitude and space which is why in wholeness i've only put it there yeah. because you know i just don't sit around drawing all day long no and i can't so I can't feel completely whole with regards to my creativity, but I feel, I don't know, maybe whole. I don't know. It was a tough, quite tough. I mean, they're, they're definitely thought-provoking questions and it's not easy to answer. No, and, and obviously we're, 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 we're bombing through things uh, uh, that we might otherwise spend a bit more time on. But um, I guess I wanted to share those because um, I, I think they're a useful routine to sort of start to get under the skin about, well, obviously what's working really well and what you can lean into and then also what are the areas that might benefit from um, having some attention if you're feeling a bit creatively um, blocked or or you want to, to to grow that part of you so we'll kind of yeah we'll circle back to that but uh, maybe something to reflect on a bit later you know if, if there are things that you want to uh, pay attention to so the, the next thing we're going to have a look at um is so this is kind of building on um what we were talking a little bit about before in the previous session which is different modes of thinking uh divergent and convergent thinking which seem to really um connect with people uh, and the idea that uh, creativity requires both parts of those you know the divergent part which is about creating possibilities in an unjudgmental and often unconscious kind of way. And then the, the convergent part, which is the more critical voice, which is about refining and realizing an idea and uh, how we're often taught. We're not actually taught to distinguish between the two of them. And because of that, we hobble ourselves because we immediately shut down the ideas we have as soon as we have them and we get discouraged and they don't go anywhere. So um, here's a question for you. And uh, it's a two-part question. Let me ju- maybe jot down whatever comes to your mind. So in relative to your coaching practice and how you're talking about it or how you want to be talking about it at the moment, what idea is currently the most urgent or exciting for you to share with the people you help? So I, I don't know the answer to this, but it's something that's plowing on my mind quite a lot. It just seems to keep coming up in conversations and it I haven't figured out how to communicate it. But the idea that tension is good, that, you know, what we, we so often go into a conversation and we want the answer. We want to get everything resolved and everything go, going. But if you do that, you, you a end up jumping to conclusions, but also you kind of... Um, you end up in ever decreasing circles and you've lost that 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 point of balance whereas if you have attention and you think of and in, in you know comedy or writing you have you often have people with relationships that create the best work because there's that tension there there's that that get backwards and forwards uh, and yet it's something that we we seem to be very poorly skilled at, at, at or or try and avoid in our current world and so we shouldn't be running away from tension. We should be saying, actually, if you're feeling tension, it's probably a good thing. And and like, but I'm not quite sure. It just keeps it's a theme, and I'm not quite sure how to communicate that. But I know that it's it's a thing. Yeah, <laughs> tension is good. Um, um, there's yeah. two things I want to point you to, John Paul. One is a blog post by Seth Godin. I don't know if you subscribe to Seth's 
blog uh, from like three or two days ago. Actually, I can tell you specifically in a second all about that, all about uh-huh. that and why it's good. I think it was yesterday. Um, he does one every day. And then um, the other thing is that we talk a lot about this. And Simon, I think, has a blog post all about tension and resolving of tension. And it's a big thing in marketing, right? Because, you know, it's it's wanting to sort of flag without being scaremongering to people the problem so that then you can resolve the tension by producing a solution. So it's interesting that on a meta level, you want to actually specifically be talking about tension, but you'll be using in your marketing the 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 tool of tension to resolve tension around tension. Yeah. And also, it's about being distinct. Like, you know, everyone tries to package themselves in that little bubble. You're this, you're that. And actually, it it, it stops people thinking about you or thinking about what you're doing because you've just already answered the question you know mm-hmm. so it's kind of what what is good in that like that open connect open tension rather than the closed tension that makes sense yeah well and also there's risk and risk is another one it's like risk can feel risky and again Seth Godin said something about this yesterday but it's like risk as risk per se isn't bad but when risk feels risky it can feel bad because there's like actually a difference between and it, it, there's something nice to, I think, work with people around, which is like a healthy tension that can be resolved or a tension towards tension, which might actually be a sign to not, you know what I mean? And yeah, it's a very interesting subject. I love it. So there's a second part I want to ask, um, following on from the, the idea that you want to share. Um, what part of you because there's sort of our, our voices and how we talk they have you know different dimensions to us is there a, is there a part of you at the moment that particularly wants to express itself do you mean physically <laughs> a physical ah. part of you a, a part of your personality francis but yeah they might if your toe wants to do something that's cool too <laughs> Yeah, part of your personality. You know, we all have multitudes. We all contain multitudes, don't we? Is there a particular part of your personality or, you know, your voice that wants to express itself? Just written down voice because I've got very clear answers to both of those questions at the moment. Right. Well, can can you share? Yeah. Yeah. Um, What have you got? I want more and more to use my voice to express that personal brand in the workplace is really important. And Mm. I'm quoting myself how it can create long-standing impact for personal growth, better communication and clarity for business. Okay. So that's, yeah, that's literally where you are in terms of the offers you're creating at the moment. Yeah. It's what I feel most strongly I want to be talking about. Yeah. (laughs) And when you say your voice, how would you define the, the quality of that? What is, what is, what makes up, what is the quality of your voice? Uh, it's the passion behind it, the experience that you can hear in the intonations of my voice. And that's why I'm working with Kieran to produce videos, mm. <clears throat> not of me doing really cringy professional videos, but just me being really me and just saying, I'm really, really excited about this. It's really good stuff. And like, listen to what I'm saying. Please listen to me. Like, I've got 20 years of experience. I don't, I haven't been like working loads of certificates thank god because i've actually got some practical experience and i've got a load of technical experience and it's like this weird mishmash of skills which you're only going to find in me and you can only understand it if you listen to me like i feel really passionate about it. yeah passion excitement experience <laughs> it's great and um, what about you john paul like the whole idea about like the part of your voice that you want to express is there a well, it, I think something that I so so something I'm I don't know if the word struggling is, but wrestling with maybe is a better way of putting it. Is that having finished my job, like what is my identity? What's my how, how do I fit into the world? How do I express myself? And just find it. I know it's a kind of process, but like trying to find that voice, finding my my. Yeah, that that new me. I'm still. It's kind of like it's a big change, and it's kind of like where well, I don't want to be like everyone else, but 
I, yeah, it's just kind of like, I don't know. And I don't, it's kind of like, mm. but it's kind of, it's like, because you, 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 you're surrounded by people and work who reinforce a particular role, reinforce a particular place in your life, a, a status and a, a, that identity, having that, that those taken away, you kind of like, well, who am I? What am I doing? And it's not like I'm lost or anything, but it's just kind of that that exploration, that search of of like where where is the, this how um this I place of actually uh Knefin is the Welsh word for it, a place of many beings, a place of you can relate to that's home, that you can go out, but you know that's your anchor. And I think that's yeah, that's kind of what I'm finding. Oh, I like that the uh, yeah, the idea of home, something sort of Set, uh, something grounding and yes. sensual and yeah. immutable and and authentic. Uh, something else that kind of came up as I heard you speak. Yeah, but and also not too constraining. So I can go out, but I can always come back. If you see what I mean, and it's like yeah, yeah, that grounding. And I think that's what I'm searching for. And feel like I'm swimming and bite my feet on quite touching the ground. Yeah, yeah, and that's what yeah. I want. That reassurance that I can always put my foot down somewhere. Mm. Um. And uh, yeah, and, and as you said, there kind of it's an exploration because it is a new space, and mm. the way to find that is by trying things, isn't it? Mm. Um, so okay, hold hold that for a sec. Okay, another piece of paper and another thing. Okay, I want you to on another piece of paper. Can you head it up? Can you see that properly? Yeah, yeah. Uh, head it up with the edit switch. And we divide the paper in two with a line. And above the first column, write off. And above the second, write on. Cool. Um, and you can put um, you can put that down on your desk, and you can put your object just on the line. Um, oh, yeah, there's a skateboard. It's a tiny Back to the Future skateboard. Oh, that's so <laughs> um, but it's so, got wheels. This is not supposed to hover. <laughs> it's Back to the Future one, not two. <laughs> it's actually. Um, oh, you're right. Three is when they go back to the um. The old no, three is the past. The is it? Oh, no, you're right. You're right. Yeah, yes. yeah. Although Don't the know. hoverboard, I think, appears in the third uh, one as well. Is it? Yeah. yeah. I think he's on the train track. Um, such good films. I love that. Um, so this, so the reason I asked you to do that, um, building on this idea of divergent and convergent thinking, you know, divergent being that sort of free-formed um, kind of space and the convergent being critical. Um, and, and how like getting those two mixed up um, stops creative potential mm. reinforcing itself. Um, so this idea of the edit switch comes from this book by um, a couple of facilitators called Andy Neal and Dion Starr, but they do work around uh, workshops um, for unleashing creative potential. And, and I like this idea of the edit switch because they talk about divergent and convergent thinking. And they kind of talk about the edit switch as being the toggle that helps us move between the two things. Um, so if you you can add, add a couple of words to the off column the, the exercise the more the full, more full exercise we had time will be to sort of um unpack how you might um define some of these uh, things but just to give a few ideas um for describing the quality of what it looks like when the edit uh switches off that's a state of flow state of quantity it's about possibility and it's divergent thinking. And offer those just as a, just a, as a as a reminder. And there may be other words that come to you that might help you connect with the with, with the quality of what that off space is like. Um, on the other side, if the uh, the edit switch is on, well, that's about a filter. Applying a filter. Um, it's about quality rather than quantity. Um, and instead of possibility, it's about potential. So potential for something to actually, you know, work as an output. And that style of thinking is convergent. 
Okay. So for the moment, for the next little bit, um, I invite you to switch the editing switch to off by moving your object into the into the side. There we go. That's cool. So we're, it's all about quantity, possibility, and divergence. We can park the critical voice, uh, knowing that we can turn that on later. We don't have to worry about that. There's a place for that. So um, has anyone read um, Rick Rubin's book, The Creative Act, A Creative Act? Uh, the Creative Act, A Way of Being. You know, Rick Rubin, the music producer. Oh, it's, um, created Def Jam Records, produced Johnny Cash, Be Beastie Boys, uh, all kinds of people. Anyway, but he's like a bit of a creative guru. He's kind of one of those people you got to kind of go, when he's in a room, what is he doing? But I think he's thinking very, very deeply about everything. Um, anyway, it's, it's a really great book. And he has his own sort of definition of the phases of creativity, which is sort of a, a sort of level underneath the sort of divergent and convergent, although I think they map quite neatly. So for him, there are four phases. There's the first phase is seeds. It's about collecting lots of ideas um, without any judgment um, and just curiosity about what they can become. The next one is experimentation, which is about playing with those ideas to understand um, what which has the potential that you want to work with. Um, the, the third one is about crafting, which is like taking it, you've just decide what that idea is you're working you're working on and it's about shaping it um to become something and then he talks about completion which is like all the stuff you need to do to get it across the line to get in, in front of uh someone but at the moment um i want us to think about being in the seeds space um and my invitation is for us to come up with yeah, the focus of this next little bit, we're going to come up with some ideas for content. And to start that off, we need a little bit of a, a stimulus um, to help uh, generate some seeds. Uh, we're going to do like, where can we get to in 90 seconds if we, between the three of us, crowdsource different types of content? So all kinds of all the kinds of ways that you could be talking about the work you do and, and putting it out there in front of people, from the big to the small, from the ridiculous to the traditional. Um, yeah, let's create a. Can we create a list of things? Does that make sense as a, a prompt? When you say between the three of us. Do you mean we should? Yeah, in in the round in conversation right now. Um, the idea, um, in the spirit of being in that sort of uh, open space non-judgmental so let's keep it pacey and uh encourage each other as we go um as we come up with ideas Does that sound good yeah cool all right then so how what, what 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 kind of um content forms are there what can we think of let's go okay so i want to get someone to build a black stage i'm going to pretend i'm doing a ted talk about the thing that i'm really par uh, passionate about and get one of you to film it and then i'm going to share it and everyone will know it's not really a ted talk but it oh. kind of might as well be Hey, Ted Talk, what else? Uh, I'm thinking of the dot, 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 you know, how you have a missing word or something where you're asking people to engage with the content in different ways and make it somehow their own. Okay. Um, yeah, what were you going to say, Francis? Well, I'm, going to oh, send, me. I'm going to send loads of people a matchbox and get them to put three objects in it and then tell me why they represent themselves and then just start like this kind of weird chain letter exchange about their matchbox objects okay what else I'm, I'm liking this is very out there uh john paul what else you got could be anything uh, could be yeah I, i'm thinking about traps what what traps are people falling to their every life their life that just keeps them stuck you know what what's the you okay. know cool traps well, right there, but a blog post about traps are you actually going to like get mouse traps and <laughs> It could be, but I, I'm thinking like when you say something goes, yes, but it's like that, but that trap that people have, you know, the. Why don't you send everyone mouse traps? <laughs> it's dangerous. <laughs> yeah, but it is dangerous. And I like mine. So I used to keep hamsters. So I can't send Okay. Let's do, let's do another thing. Let's, uh, uh, let's keep it. 
So I keep it going, but one one word answers. Okay. Ah. Form, forms of content. Oh right, like just all the all the normal ones. Yeah. Song. Well, and, okay, hmm? song, book, blog post, social media posts, um, uh, podcasts, album, <laughs> uh, comic book, um, uh, tapestry. <laughs> okay. Painting. John Paul <laughs> okay. So, uh, totally different angle. Feelings, sensations, emotions, touch, relationships, um, experiences, uh, stories, um, pain and and love and yeah and haste and 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 uh, um, mousetrap loss. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's brilliant. So, that is a wow! That is a stupendous uh, list of um, words. I've tried to capture everything. That's what I've just popped it all into the into the chat. Some yes, there's a bit um, yeah, some out there, some really out there stuff, and I, I like that as well as some, some more kind of um, common things. Okay, so this next exercise. I'm going to, it's another timed exercise. We're in the seeds phase. This is all about generating ideas. What I want you to do is um, inside, hmm, can you create 10 ideas in three minutes? So based on those lists that you wrote? Yeah, so what you're going to use as your basis is that we've talked about, since we, we've started talking, there, there are, there are things we know what it is you create in the world we know the ideas that you want to be talking about now and the quality of voice that you want to bring to talking about those ideas so bringing those to bear on uh picking for 10 of these uh content types from this list what does that lead you to in terms of what you create so I've, i encourage you to think about like it's it's a, a level below okay what um it's a book about um it's uh it's a book about helping people be creative or it's a song about helping be people be creative like you know get un underneath that like how would you actually use that form um and i encourage you to be playful and daft as you, you can be as out there as you want to be does that make sense as a yeah. as yeah. a prompt all right so we're going to give it 3 minutes uh note down 10 ideas and also I encourage you to if there's one of those for content forms you think yeah definitely choose one of those choose something that turns you off as well as what turns you on just as a test okay okay bye 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 <laughs>
One minute left. My brain is really... <laughs> Oh my god. Ten seconds to finish up whichever one you've got at the moment. Get it down. Okay. Brilliant. Before we, we come together to, to speak again, cast your eye over your list. Can you pick two? that really, really stand out as especially interesting or exciting or just full of potential, right? Which one do you think, oh, that's got legs or could have legs or it's got one leg? <laughs> okay. I highlight that. So this being in the sort of divergent uh, phase, where we're we're looking for ideas we're not trying to judge them the idea of moving quickly um and i like is is what helps and i think i like putting um like a time constraint around things because you're not focused on quality you're focused on quality uh, quantity um so okay the next bit we're going to we're going to do i'm going to invite you to as briefly as you can uh, we'll take it in turns, uh, we'll maybe start with Francis, um, share your idea, um, and then the other two of us are going to word bomb you. So by that I mean, so in a moment, John Paul, Francis is going is to share one of her two ideas, and, and then full silent, and we're just going to pepper her with our initial responses associations that come to our mind um, could be massively tangential um, things we see here you know you talked about sensation earlier you know what what arises in us in terms of thoughts and ideas in response to um, what she shared Does that makes sense see how it goes okay okay Francis do you want to tell us uh, as briefly as you can your your first idea a podcast about writing a book called Friends in High Places about influences, uh, but also family and work trauma. And the chapters are my grandpa, the entrepreneur, Mr. Root, the gay drama teacher, Anya, the personal trainer, Gemma, the food coach, my mum, the therapist, my dad, the solicitor and uh, Renaissance man, me, and then tenuous pe pe famous people I know and my cat. Okay, in one minute, let's just share whatever comes up for us. John Paul, do you want to, is there anything you want to start with? Chaos. <laughs> I, I invite you, Francis, to note down whatever we share and uh, just enter listen <clears throat> rather than chaos. comment. Did he say yeah. chaos? Chaos. I'm thinking about, when you said high places, I thought, I thought of a high chair, then a lifeguard's chair, then I thought, well, where you could interview each other in really, really tall buildings. Um, uh, and I also thought about, I also thought about warmth and family and home. Yeah. I think I have to explain what I said because it's not a word for me anymore. Okay. Um, I meant chaos because I, it's kind of like pulling at several strings at once and not knowing where they're, they're going to lead. And that's kind of why, where the chaos thing comes from. Uh, yeah. Cool. Okay, that was a minute. Um, Can I respond then? Because I know exactly what this podcast is all about. I'm super clear. So, <laughs> yeah. Do you want me to? Do, do you want to uh, know or not right now? Yeah, and and also, you know, yes. And what was it like sharing, creating that, and sharing it um, with us? 
Yeah, I mean, I, I call it Friends in High Places because both it's a punchy, uh, you know, and an ironic one, uh, because, of course, people who are friends in high places are idiots and also exploit people. Um, but, of course, when you do... So what I mean by lofty, what I want to do by breaking down each chapter of the book and then make a podcast dedicated to each chapter of the book is be vulnerable and sort of share how people have influenced me in a really positive way in my life, but also have created massive trauma. And in doing so, I want to be talking about my personal brand um, and how it's developed from people in high places. But of course, talking about corporate work is to have to network and it's about nepotism. So there's a kind of meta irony behind the friends in high places thing. So I'm like really clear about what the purpose of it is. Nice. Well, it sounds really clear. Um, is that something you've been thinking about before? OK, that's brand new. So okay. I'll be honest, I mm. did two hours ago think if I was going to write a book, it would be called Friends in High Places, but that's as far as I'd got. But that, okay. that, that was the seed when you said let's work with seeds. I was like, okay, well, there was a mm. seed two hours ago of that. Brilliant. Okay, let's, uh, let's switch a route. And John Paul, would you, would you mind sharing one of your ideas with us and, uh, and we'll have a similar chance to respond? I think I was still in creative mode. It's certainly not as well thought out as granted but it was the idea of a kind of chain blog posts about how people relate to certain subjects so you almost like you know you like you add like adding a verse of a song you kind of add you put something and then you, someone else puts the next verse and next verse and next verse and kind of exploring the creations that people's relationships to a particular subject from multiple perspectives uh creating a thing that's bigger than any single person and yeah that's interesting francis should we give um john paul a piece of our mind for a minute yeah, no, <laughs> I, I really love that because it's really inclusive it's fun yeah i i you know i think songs really important um and it memorable when people might remind you might invite people to like memorize their own verse or whatever it was that you were asking people to contribute i can't quite remember what you said but you know to then perform it in some way like there's many ways that you could get people to join on the bandwagon i was thinking about definitely yeah the the, the whole spirit of connection that you were talking about comes across loud and clear and co-creative as well yeah, yeah, a real co-creative um, experience. And also I was thinking about, you know, you're, it's about finding different dimensions on one thing or, you know, that's a, a metaphor or it's about building up layers, layers and layers of interpretation um, or uh, I kind of kind of think about um, a constellation um, being connected, you know, uh, point to point to point and creating meaning through that. Um, connecting of, of things um that's a whole minute um yeah uh thank you very much both for both for for sharing um i'm just conscious of time we did start a little bit late but i'm just aware what people might need, might need to get off for yeah. oh, i'm okay yeah. for another five yeah. yeah yeah okay another five minutes um well uh do you want to hear my second idea yeah if you'd like to share it yeah so my we're sort of coming towards the end of what i was um wanted to wanted to offer which is kind of to leave you with something that you felt that you wanted to work on and that maybe and also the value of sharing your ideas with other people at least as far as uh helps me in terms of uh developing those um so if there are other things that emerge from the conversation that you might want to um, build in or maybe could, could inform the work but anyway yes please share Francis. Well, I just thought it'd be really cheap and easy to produce a comic book that had completely blank pages apart from the back and the front and send those to each of my clients and they have to create the drama and the narrative so the front pages maybe they're they're branded somehow according to the work that I do but then inside it's their story kind of thing. That's awesome so create create your own adventure yeah yes tell your your own story yeah yeah um and the front and back cover would be i don't uh, know but i think you know they could just i could they could print it out right yeah put their own paper inside and they have to like 
create it and send it back to me. Yes. And I suppose as, as a, uh, a prompt or as a framework that you may or may not use already in, in your coaching, you know, you can guide people through, use a bit of story theory to maybe um, shape invite particular responses you know what's the uh what's the happy ending what's the 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 long night of the soul what's the um the call to adventure you know stuff actually, like that yeah i mean obviously we have the whole guide in here i think but i know someone mm. called maggie who was on my art history ma and she then went she did an ma about comics and then she went on to do a phd in comics so i might i might contact her brilliant yeah well they uh, that's the connection thing coming in there, isn't it? You know, uh, leaning into a bit of expertise from uh, someone else who can support your work. Yeah, I love it. Did you want to share your your other idea, John Paul? Like, uh, yeah, I've changed it actually, and I, I haven't okay. fully thought about it. This idea of this kind of tapestry of feelings, this kind of like you kind of you you put the blocks together and you say, you know, when I feel happy this is the situation, this is how I feel, and this is where I know it's not working for me. And like when I'm feeling angry about something, this is how I, I you know, like the, the positive and negatives of mm. each side. And in a way you start to map how you relate to each of the feelings. And then that can help you kind of navigate them and rec recognize them, nav navigate them in your, in your world. Because we don't often talk about that kind of stuff, like, you know, about, rather than just we, we just we have feelings but we don't manage them and i think that there's a there's some there's a there's an idea there but i haven't figured it yeah, out quite, no, that's but, definitely yeah something. um but also not not in the happy is good and sad is exactly. bad but because that's just so that uh, toxic positivity yeah. is too much these days but actually just seeing it almost like a random tapestry this is where i am right now that's that's not a bad thing but this is how I relate yeah to no value judgment in that but actually trying to understand the uh the experience of those things and the relationship to them i think that would be a great that sort of internal education kind of uh being able to read the internal weather well, yes, yeah, yes yeah 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 no I could I definitely see some use in that and it would be a, a real um a real uh mind blower for some people to be able to be having a framework to, or, or a tool to be able to look at those um I'm really sad I, I can't just like give you the headlines of my other ones even oh. if... <laughs> <laughs> okay Let, let's give, give us one one more like the one where, yeah is that one that made you laugh what were you laughing at um, yeah, it was the tap. Well, it reminded me John Paul was talking. So a tapestry of mixed media materials with cats to sleep on it, which I would then photograph and do a TED talk about. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's that's already a very realised concept, isn't it? And I shan't share the others with you. Well, they they are they are seeds that may um, germinate and flower further down the road I've, I've been a bit exposed now the community really know what's going on <laughs> well what's going on as well you know there's there's all kinds yeah. of things going on no it's been an I, absolute joy I haven't thought that way since I put a load of poetry in urinals when I was at art college so thank you so much I really appreciate it oh, oh brilliant well that's good so <laughs> yes it was I, I my intention was to try and help people with a bit of joy and possibility. So hopefully some of that's come into into the, into the session today. So yes, yeah, so, so you can take that as a quote. As much fun as putting poetry in your annals. <laughs> I think I might have to ask you for another testimonial. <laughs> I don't think that's going to travel. <laughs> um, so uh, yeah, so that was a little little bit of um, uh, a walk through what I think uh, underpins, you know, uh, a s sustainable and flourishing kind of creative existence and those different modes of thinking and how we can switch between them. Um, and, you know, and, and how ideation and developing ideas can be fun. And it doesn't have to be a, a solitary thing as well, because I think being able to share things as well um, enlivens um, the the exercise and also creates a bit more potential as well. Um yeah uh, well we may have a, a very short check out and then um yeah thank I, i'll go first uh thank you very very much both for showing up um and uh and and open-heartedly jumping into those things i i hope there was something useful for you here and uh yeah it was it was really fun to hear your ideas and 
if you ever want to talk about any of these things that you want to create, um, I, I, it's on the therapy. What? <laughs> Recommend therapy. <laughs> Recommend therapy. I, the, the reason I, I, like, I like helping the people that I help is because I genuinely love hearing about people's ideas that they have, that they want to make. So I'm always up for a conversation like that. Anyway, but that's me. Um, I'll pass to John Paul. Yeah, I think what I wanted today was just a feeling of freedom, but also just some inspiration just to like, because I think so much of what I do, there's that intent. And actually, it's nice to get out of that and like explore new ideas, and new territory, and ex be exposed to other people's kind of thinking as well. I think that's been brilliant. Mm -hmm. Thanks, John Paul. Francis. Uh, I've just, I thought it was brilliant. Uh, it's given me another idea, which is that I'm, if it's okay with you both, going to share the recording of this um, with potential uh, people that might bring me into the workplace to run workshops about personal brand, because I already want people to know what Paul does and how he can bring creativity into the workplace as well. So I've decided that I'd like to invite as many coaches in this community and anyone watching this on repeat should bear this in mind. If you'd like to do a workshop like Paul has, to test your own workshop style by recording it. I'm also then able to share it with people that might be really interested in your work in the corporate space. And, you know, together we can collaborate and bring people in the workplace, something really meaningful. So thank you. Thank you. That's, uh, what a wonderful offer for people. And, um, and I also hope to listen to the uh, first episode of friends in high places. <laughs> some point in the near future <laughs> thank you see all you right then. <laughs> take care both see you again thank soon you. bye bye, bye.